there's a Reader's Digest joke that has always resonated with me. And I think it kind of has a bit to do with what I wanted to talk about today. What is the biggest lie in the universe, it asks? It's the idea that any of us have read and agreed to the terms and conditions. Yeah, I think we can all agree. We aren't really a patient species when it comes to technology, but maybe we're even more impatient in our politics. Now, with that being said, I wanted to tell you all about one of my earliest memories in politics that particularly stands out in today's political landscape, the 2012 US presidential debates. Now, I don't remember much about these debates, but what I do remember was the two candidates, then President Obama and current Senator Mitt Romney, intensely debating over issues such as oil drilling, budgeting, and foreign affairs. These details stand out to me because while the debates were certainly heated at times, they were absolutely nothing like what the political landscape has been since the 2016 election cycle. The candidates went back and forth on their policies, arguing which would be better for the country, but neither aggressively attacked the character and the personal life of the other in the ways we see today. Now what I want to make clear before I go further is that I'm not interested in debating the politics, policies, or perceptions of the parties themselves, but rather what the election revealed in terms of false information and the aftermath in our politics and our everyday lives since. Specifically, I want to spotlight the importance of effectively addressing this issue of misinformation and disinformation and listing some key ways that we can address these issues individually. Ironically, however, my experience with the 2012 debates would actually be short-lived, as I found myself far less interested at the time than my parents. It was the 2016 election that caught my eye and changed my perspective dramatically, as I believe it did for many others. This is when we all started to witness the significant impacts this era of misinformation brought on our nation. And while I don't believe there's any one person or group responsible for this dramatic change, one major contributor has been, no doubt, the former president, Donald J. Trump. Now, while I don't want to address the politics of his campaign or presidency, I do want to acknowledge the fact that he and many of his supporters were a significant part of breathing new life into the practice of spreading false information with both accidental and malicious intent. Now, going back to my experience of 2016 onwards, my family witnessed the dispiriting impacts of misinformation within our own extended family, with now some of my family members believing the lies about the election and our own government officials, which is something we have trouble talking about all the time. Even simple tweets now have dramatic effects in both the political world and our everyday lives. They can shift elections, they can change people's minds. And what's worse is the standard they now set a blatant disregard for truth. During the campaigns in the presidency, my family would see story after story of heinous actions and crimes that were influenced by false information like these. And unfortunately, we now live in an era where false information, where false information honestly takes root and certain institutions are no longer trusted. People no longer feel the need to even try and justify the truth according to their perspective. Instead, they would rather just stick to their beliefs and define what was true for them, regardless of whether it was proven or not. At this point, the truth no longer has the same value and importance it once held, becoming simply as important as one wants it to be. This not only makes it harder to know the truth in this kind of time, but even harder to prove it. For if large swaths of people choose not to accept objective facts, how are you supposed to prove it to them otherwise? There is no greater example of this than the insurrection on January 6 earlier this year, where a mob of the former president's supporters invaded the United States Capitol on the false basis of the election being stolen from them. This dangerous and really horrifying event not only shows the political effects of such a dramatic change in our political life, but even worse, the human ones, as several people, including officers, died and or were severely injured with many of the sacred halls in the Capitol tarnished unlike almost any other time in history. What's even more crazy is the people who engage in SAC have openly and overwhelmingly attributed their motive to this widespread conspiracy and falsity that the former president won the election. Through the simple means of Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and other hot spots of disinformation, this lie was spread to the point that people engaged in what most, including our law enforcement believe, is an insurrection. 
Now, in order to find a solution to this problem, we must first understand and define what exactly is misinformation and disinformation, and why are they being spread in the first place? Now, to understand these two, misinformation is like telling someone that the sky is red. You know, you can simply look up and see that it's not true. That is because it is a relatively simple term. It is about just the inaccurate and spreading of misleading information. You don't actually need to be intentional to do it. Disinformation, on the hand, is far more dangerous as it is about willfully and like with the intent to incur harm spreading false and often more complex information. The example being, instead of saying that the sky is red, I tell you that this whole world, is a, this reality itself, is a simulation. There really is no sky at all. Now, at first, that might seem simple and easy to disprove, but this kind of complex conspiracy is all over the place today, and you see it all the time, and unfortunately, when you believe this kind of thing in the matrix or elsewhere, how are you supposed to prove that, that that's not true? And though both forms are major contributors to our current reality, as I said, disinformation is fundamentally dangerous because it is exploitative. It uses our religion, our patriotism, and our desire for justice to outrage us and to dupe us into faulty reasoning. Both are essential to this current problem of false information, but unfortunately, we can't stop everyone from taking part in it. And so we have to take our own steps individually to limit our own use of misinformation. So first, we have to monitor and understand our own exposure, you know, making sure we understand what we're intaking. As Professor Lewandowski from the University of Bristol says, the fundamental problem with misinformation is that once people have heard it, they tend to believe and act on it even after it's been corrected. This means we have to develop a kind of self-awareness of the information we take in making sure to diversify our reliance on sources and choosing different perspectives to hopefully give us a better out understanding of what we're listening. This way, we don't immediately, we're not inclined to immediately side with one perspective over another without truly understanding what it is you're hearing and agreeing with. What is also important is to understand the motivations and drives behind the companies, the platforms we use. As companies like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and so on, all have their own reasons for allowing false information to spread on their platform, with one of the main ones being that it retains high viewership. With that being said, we also have to look at other people's spread of misinformation, as we not only have to understand that we can spread it and we can interpret it wrong, but other people can try to convince us of it too. They can often use similar tricks, as uh, doc, Dr. Schwarz of the University of Southern California says, even after we hear a correction, it doesn't invalidate our own thoughts. And it's our own thoughts that can maintain a bias even after it's been corrected. And so we have to be on the lookout for other people trying to use false information against us as well as false stories themselves. They will try to use uh, fake experts or emotional language or conspiracy theories, as I mentioned, to try to manipulate the readers into believing what they want to believe. Especially, this is even worse when you have people that you know trying to do this. And so the best thing to try to do this is to understand the information, where the information is coming from, and talk to those friends and family that might believe in that information and understand why are they spreading that in the first place. Even more than that, encourage your friends and family to check neutral and nonpartisan sources to, val to check against the credibility of the information. As more than likely, if you find an information in these kind of nonpartisan areas, and you find it widespread in a similar context, it's likely true. More than that, make sure you make it clear to any members of your family, friends, or others that might believe in this information that we can all be victims of misinformation. In fact, we all probably have. But that doesn't mean we can't learn from it and you know, grow out smarter and more aware of the world around us because of it. Now, on the other side of things, I wanted to mention one final little trick, which is that these False information stories have all sorts of specific tactics they like to employ. Dr. Linden of the University of Cambridge mentioned specifically six degrees of manipulation. D discrediting, trolling, impersonation, conspiracy, emotion, and manipulation, really. All of these are used to entangle you and make you believe what you're hearing is true. 
And so if you keep on a lookout for this from both other stories, from news anchors, from media, and your own friends, you'll be far better prepared to understand the information you're taking in. Now on the other side of things, I want to bring up the elephant in the room, often used as an excuse for false information, social media and elsewhere. Free speech, you hear it all the time. First and foremost, free speech is not a guaranteed right on any of these platforms, as, it, as they are private companies, not the government. They do have a right to limit and contain the spread of misinformation of information to whatever they choose. And that is something you agree to when you sign up on them. Second, just as no one is immune to the law if they yell fire in a crowded or public area, like what this may be one day, there is no justification for committing similar kinds of incendiary acts online. There should really be no greater protection online either, as this kind of danger can still have dramatic impacts as we've seen with the insurrection. Many of this kind of stuff was organized online. In general, whether it's online or in person, we have to be smart about the information we take in, and we also have to remember that as citizens of our respective countries and the world, we have an obligation to one another as people, regardless of whether it's offline or online, to treat each other as human beings. Overall, misinformation, disinformation, and false information in general is a monumental issue today that finds its way in every part of its lo our lives whether it be politics, as I mentioned, economic livelihoods, or even the current pandemic threatening the public health right now. This crisis is something that we can all play a part in fixing. So we, also, we can do this both individually and together, both in the online world and in the physical world around us, we can work together to help each other learn from our mistakes and misinformation and come out stronger because of this. So as a citizen, you can help your friend, your neighbor, your stranger, and, you can, and as a responsibility to those people, to yourself, we must all proactively combat false information wherever we see it. So here's another big lie. There are some problems we can't solve. By uniting and acknowledging our common values, there's no, that's some fake news, frankly, we can dispel together. Thank you. <laughs>